Okay, hey everyone, Sorry, Now Rocks is here and back in front of the camera. Uh, we got my typical white shirt on and everything. Uh, <laughs> okay, so yeah, like once again, it's been like a month since I made um, a, basically a review. I think the last one was Inside Out, and so this one is straight out of Compton, as well as I haven't made a single video in like about a week or so. Uh, totally sorry about that. Got some free time now, so I just want to make one real quick. Throw this up on my YouTube channel so you guys can view it. Well, with that being said, I'm also thinking about getting um, getting a stand for this camera. That way I can actually be able to get um, some more angles rather than just film in this one location. This is actually starting... There's a lot of water back there, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> this is actually starting to get a little bit um, kind of played out of, out a bit. Um, I don't mind filming in my room or filming in other places. It's just that there's like no way for me to move the camera back and forth here. Uh, so I have to keep it in one area. Uh, but that's not what you want to hear about. You want to hear about Straight Outta Compton, which I'm so, so sorry. And I'm just going to change this light here really quickly. Um, I'm trying to get like a little backdrop here. So, but just so it won't um, put a glare on my glasses. Um, and like I was saying, I'm so sorry that this took a while to get out of here. Straight Outta Compton's been out for a while. Everyone's got their opinions on it. I, of course, have my own opinion on it as well as um, how good I think it is, or how good the film actually is. And the film is very good, and we're going to get to that in a second. Um, so, Straight Outta Compton is the telling or retelling of, of N.W.A., which is a uh, group, Niggas With Attitude. Don't worry, I'm black, I can say it. <laughs> um, niggas, niggas Without Attitude, um, which is a West Side, West, which was a West Coast rap group back in the early 90s, uh, late 80s. But mostly, I think, like, the early 90s, definitely, um, is when people really started to to get into them, even on the East Coast at the time. And as a kid, you know, I loved, I liked N.W.A. You know, I knew who Ice Cube was, Easy e and uh, Dr. Dre, of course, Snoop, and all the rest of them. And they all make an appearance in here, and, well people, the guys portraying them. Um, so getting their story, number one, I didn't know Dr. Dre had a brother. I didn't know about that. Uh, but, it, of course, if you knew about that, it ends kind of tragically. But anyway, uh, so this is basically their biography on not only their group, but on their own personal backgrounds. And the movie does well, giving uh, just enough screen time to every character, even their manager at the time, Jerry, who's played by um, Paul Giamatti, and yes, 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 finally something from The Amazing Spider-Man 2, um, something where I can actually say, oh look, Paul Giamatti is in this, a great actor, and they're actually using him to his advantage rather than disadvantage, okay? They're actually... He's actually in the movie a lot, and of course his acting is just, just perfect, you know, the guy's great, and it's nice to see him in a good role again, I'm glad he took up this role. Um, as well as the acting for everyone else is fantastic. This has to be one of the most perfectly cast movies, and I said this about something like, um, you know, Lord of the Rings, or, um, uh, uh, what, what was what was the other movie? Uh, I think I said I think it was the Hunger Games too. I said Lord of the Rings, the Hunger Games, um, Harry Potter, and well, when I was just like, like you know, those are just movies that are just perfectly cast. And I think I talked about that in my uh, top ten movies of the year list last year. And don't worry, this movie is already going to be in my top five. <laughs> Uh, that's how good it is, guys. You know, if you haven't seen it, everyone's seen it by now. It was number one at the box office. It even knocked down Mission Impossible. That was really surprising. Um, but at the same time, you know, there's been a lot of Mission Impossibles. This is the first, you know, rap group movie. First real music I've heard in a long time. You know, I'm not much of a big fan of the modern day rap. I have no idea who it, most the majority of these guys are nowadays. And I'm only 24, so what does that say? <laughs> Uh, 24, and I have no idea what any of the modern day, modern day rappers are. No idea. Um, 
Uh, yeah, so once again, going back to the casting, absolutely fantastic. Um, the guy who plays the guy who plays Dre is good. Suge Knight is is really good. Easy E, um, of course, Ice Cube, which Ice Cube's son, o, o, I think his name is O'Shea Jackson Jr. Fantastic man, guy looks just like his father. It's it's so it's scary. It's scary how much he looks like his dad. It's it, it honestly is. Ew. Whether whether it was with the Jerry curls or when he when Ice Cube finally uh, shaved his head, he cut off all his hair and he just stayed with the you know the low fade, um, the original black man look. <laughs> um, but when he cut off all his hair and he got the beard and everything, God, he looks like his dad. It was so it was scary. It, he looked like him from the movie Friday. <laughs> you know, when you go back and watch the movie Friday, you you think that that. That was his son. It's it's unbelievable. Um, yeah, he does a really really fantastic job, man, as betraying his own father, and couldn't have been better cast. Um, normally, when they want to get their you know um, the children into acting or the well offspring into acting or any other family member uh, into acting. Uh, not all of it turns out to be so fantastic, uh, but this one really worked out as far as the casting goes. Um, so perfect casting, man. Perfect casting. Acting was, was really good all around from these guys. They felt genuine. It didn't feel like anybody was portraying anybody. When I looked up on that screen, I saw Easy e I saw Ice Cube. I saw Dr. Dre. Um... Even some of the cameos, like um, they got a guy who, to play Snoop Dogg. He was he was pretty good. Uh, he wasn't in there long. Guy who played Tupac looked looked a lot like Tupac. Um, wasn't in there long. Literally for like 20, 20 to thirty seconds. That's all Tupac got. But just just acknowledging that you know he was there at the time and Dre met him and Dr. Dre met a lot of people. We met a lot of good talent. And of course he was a good talent, great talent himself still is. But him, him meeting all, all these uh, other rappers, other these other well-known rappers that we know nowadays, like I said, like Snoop Dogg and stuff like that, and seeing, and just seeing these guys betray him, fantastic man, it really, really good. Um, so yeah, if you know the story of M.W.A., you know exactly what's going to happen. You you already know how the ending of the movie, the movie's ending basically. Now, spoilers, but I'm not really giving this away because this really happened back in 1993. Um, Eazy-E unfortunately passed away, and that's basically when the movie ends or it's starting to do its roundup. And then, of course, they have clips of um, the real rappers themselves, the real Dr. Dre, Eazy-E, and stuff like that at the end. Um, and then, of course, they're playing Straight Outta Compton at, at the end, as well as um, showing clips of Dr. Dre moving on and starting beats and beats being sold to Apple and everything like that. Uh, just fantastic, man. Fantastic. Uh, really good editing in this film. Um, there, are some, there are some shots. There's a good bit of shots I noticed where a character is talking and there's a close-up shot of his face. And if there's two people talking, there'll be a close-up shot of his face, close-up shot of the other person's face, and then the next, then the next edit would be like a pan-out um, shot that shows both of the people, you know, talking to each other or staring at each other. It could be an, an intense moment. Um, there's a lot of that with the police, and I love how this movie is showing, and I love how people are seeing that, you know, some some things in in our timeline just hasn't just haven't changed even it's been like 20 years and it still hasn't changed you know the cops are still harassing are still harassing men of color minorities in general um even even you know uh, white people or <laughs> yeah caucasians white people yeah even white people are you know being harassed by the cops nowadays and it seems like it's kind of getting worse uh like back then it was bad but mostly they, they would just say oh you know they just harassed the black guys or something like that but no now it's starting to jump into every um race group and it seemed to be and not saying that it's less about race of course this is a whole nother political topic i'm not even going to go into um just going to focus on the movie um it shows the police brutality and it shows how that even though these guys become famous they're still seen as gangsters and thugs and and, and all the gangster rap means nothing they're still seen as game members just game members with money now and 
I like that. I like how it showed that, well, you know, even though we're famous, nothing changed for us. You know, we're still targeted by the cops. Uh, we'll still get pulled over or chased by them. It's, it, it's, it's crazy. Huh. Following NWA's journey from how they started, how all how everybody met, they they pretty much knew each other. Like they said, straight out of Compton, they all came out of Compton. Um, so they all knew each other, grew up around in basically the same neighborhoods. Um, how NWA got started, its eventual fall with Ice Cube leaving the group, that was like a big hit towards them. And then their... Um, Standoff with NWA and Ice Cube, I kind of remember that. <laughs> and um, and then from there, the disbandment of NWA, and then them trying to get back together. You know, they're still, they're, like, there's, that's friendship, it's still there. And it shows the, um, the sort of, like, the decisions that Eazy e had to make, and he had a big role in this. And this movie was actually dedicated to him. So... It's nice to see him get so much screen time and so much mention, and I didn't know that um, EZ was like basically like the foundation of NWA. It was actually Dr. Dre and EZ, um, but EZ um, sort of took over the, um, the whole promotionals. Um, him, him, and the manager that they have with them at the time before Dr. Dre decided to go off and just. Uh, joined Suge Knight and make Death Row, and then of course Dre went off and he did his own thing, and so there's like there's like two movies going on here, and it's it's a long movie. It's it's like two hours and twenty seven minutes long. It's a long movie, uh, so you have them growing them growing. Well, they already start off as um, young men, so you already have them, so you have them in Compton before they're famous. When they become famous. Um, this bandit of the group, everyone going their separate ways. Some people staying with Easy E, staying with NWA, the downfall of NWA, um, but also them opening up the gate to more rappers and you know sort of like this gangster rap in this genre. And then of course players like Snoop Dogg came in and then Tupac himself left the East Coast to go over to the West Coast. Uh, so things like that, and it, it does it betrays it so well. Cinematography is really good in this film. There's not much to say. There's not much I I don't like with this. I guess other people could have got more screen time. Um, I know this is just me nitpicking here because I know one of the members of NWA actually joined Bone Thugs and Harmony, and that was just kind of like a throwaway. He just like, oh, you know, I'm part of another group now. We're called uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony. And he's like, and here, and he gave Easy E one of his tapes. He's like, here, here's one of, well, it's not a tape yet. It is a tape. It was a cassette. You know, it's the 90s. So he's like, here's one of the uh, tapes here, and uh, you can listen to it if you like. And so it's, it's that sort of thing. There's there some throwaways here and there, and it's understandable because the movie kept the focus on what it needed to be, and what it needed to be about was about NWA and and these these rappers and their rise to fame and of course the downfall of the group but not necessarily the downfall of the individual and i like how it still followed dr dre it still followed ice cube for a bit it does kind of get off of ice cube for for a bit when he when he leaves they still go through the whole um beef between ice cube and nwa for a bit but as far as him like making his movies, they just like, oh, so you're working on the screenplay for a Friday? Yep. And that's it. And they'll be like, it's there's also another scene where Easy E tells Ice Cube, he's like, Oh, I saw Boys in the Hood. That's it. That's just like the whole throwaway to those other movies. And I guess they're like, you know, we're not gonna really promote too many of those other movies as although this is an Ice Cube production. <laughs> so that was kind of so that, that was kind of odd. I, I guess they, you know, it could be copyright things mostly. I'm sure Ice Cube has a hand in stuff like Friday and things like that, as well as uh, Boys in the Hood. Uh, but at the same time, I guess they didn't want to go to too much of the copyright legislation. Like they could just only mention the name or something like that. Um, but overall, I don't see anything bad about this film. I, I don't think there's anything in it personally that didn't work for me. Uh, this is the same thing with like Ex Machina or um, 
Furious 7 I talked about, as well as Inside Out. It's like, it, we're, I'm getting good movies this year. Yes, yes, this year started off kind of boring, but now, you know, starting to get some good movies and you got Mad Max Fury Road, and I, I, I'm apologizing for it right now. I would not be able to do a review for that one. It's, it's too late now. It's too late. Um, but I'm finally, finally getting a chance to see it, and I would have loved to make a review on Mad Max, but I'm, I'm just not going to worry about it. Uh, these vlog reviews are pretty standard. <sighs> but okay, guys, you know, if you haven't seen Straight Outta Compton, don't worry, you don't know who NWA is. Uh, excuse me. Go check it out. Go check it out. Even if it's just like, well, you know, we want to go to the movies, we want to go out with a, a couple of friends or something like that, or I want to take my girlfriend out somewhere and... Uh, we want to go to the movies, but we don't know what we want to see. See see this. Regardless, you know, it doesn't matter what race you are. It doesn't matter uh, what type of music you're into. It, it's, just a, it's just a good film altogether. All I would say there is a lot of rap in it, so be prepared for that. But don't worry. Don't worry. It's the golden age of, of the gangster rap. You know, it's the good stuff. Okay? So there's a lot of good music in here. Um, it brought back... To, yeah, excuse me. It brought back some memories for me, as more so my mother, who was also there to see it with me. And great film, really, really great film. There's, there's nothing more I can say about it. Um, writing, writing, writing is great. Perfect casting, great acting, beautiful cinematography, pr really good editing. Um, I, I don't know if this movie's going to be eligible for an Oscar, but it should. <laughs> At least in one of those categories, it should be eligible. Um, screenplay, you know, definitely, it's really good, <laughs> really good. Um, yeah, they, they should get something for this, and I'm glad the movie's doing so well. Uh, okay, guys, thanks for watching. I'm just going to end it here before I say, uh, 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 and, 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 you know, start muttering to myself or something so uh yep that's it thank you guys for watching and go see straight out of compton if you haven't seen it yet or see it again you know i met people that saw it twice already and i wouldn't mind seeing it again i really wouldn't mind seeing it again uh but okay guys that's it for now so i'll see you in the next video take care